Hello everybody and welcome to episode 6 of the British Boxing Blog podcast. We're coming to you this Sunday afternoon from Gateshead, um, the day after an intriguing, exciting Northern Area title fight yesterday in Darlington, which has certainly got the region's boxing fans and boxers and everybody talking really. It was a, it was a great day in Darlington, but yes, uh, thank you for joining us again. And um, I'm here as well, just after that part of long intro. <laughs> he is, so... there he is. We're going to start off with that review of the Darlington show. I think it makes sense. We were both there yesterday. It's a pretty big event in terms of the Northeast Boxing. It's the last show of the year. So what a way to, to cap the year, really, and, and finish off boxing in the region. Yeah, it is. It was a great end to, uh, as I said on Twitter yesterday, it was a great fight to end. Uh, um, a really good year for Northeast Boxing. Um for those of you that don't know the fight we're talking about, it was a Northern Area super bantamweight title fight between Jamie Humble of say Newcastle and Chrissy Wood of Darlington, which ended in a 95-95 draw yesterday over 10 rounds. Yeah, so both men retained their undefeated records, but I think it's fair to say that neither was particularly happy about the results. Arguably, mm. Team Wood were more content with the draw and seemed relieved a bit strong, but... They knew that it was a close fight and that Humble could have won. I think that was the consensus around ringside. Most people did have Jamie Humble win. I know I had him winning by two rounds. Uh, you were a little bit wider. I, I think, think I was a little bit wider than that, but uh, that's again that's not taking nothing away from Chrissy Wood. Uh, he, you know, he more than played his part in a, in a fantastic fight, uh, and he, he finished the fight really well. His fitness was uh, was incredible and. You know, towards the end of the fight, he was he was coming on strong, whereas you could see Humble was visibly tiring as well. But it it was a great fight. Um, it was it was a very absorbent fight. You couldn't take your eyes off it at any point. Um, both lads, you know, were a credit to themselves and and the gyms they're from. And you know, there was maybe it was respectful at the end, and there was obvious disappointment in the fighting chance uh, gym camp, the Jamie Humble's camp. Uh, they they were. They were surprised at the draw, although you know Gary Barr, uh, Jamie's coach, just didn't really have many complaints. He, you know, he said he thought Jamie won the fight, but there were close rounds there. And I think maybe they had the feeling that Jamie could have done a bit more, maybe to to you know take the close rounds a bit more. That was my view as well. And how did you see it playing? You know, stylistically, what what was your thoughts on well, it? Well, this is what I'd sort of mentioned to a few people when discussing it yesterday that before the fight. I looked at it and thought, right, in terms of the boxer and who's potentially going to be on the back foot, that would have been Jamie Humble. He would have looked to keep things long with his jab. He had a reach advantage. He was the taller, the bigger man in there. And thinking maybe that his skills and his defensive style, his nice style, would mm. have kept the fight quite long and he could have picked him up, uh, picked him off from the distance. Chrissy would be a little bit shorter, was always going to be the one that would have to get in close to get his work off. And I think... He did that without really troubling Humble on too many occasions. Humble seemed a bit, I don't know if wound up's the right term, but he was happy to stand and trade and, and work in close, mm. which you can't really rely on that narrative to think, oh, well, I thought Humble was going to box long, and he's not. Yep. So then now that's Chrissy Wood's fight. It doesn't work like that. It's not as simple as that to, to split and to judge from that. Because... What I found was neither, both men were sort of responding to each other quite well. Neither was leading particularly well. There wasn't a clear aggressor who was winning and being quickest to the punch and, and getting the success that way. It was a case of one of them landed, then the other one did, and then it would either spin off and break again or it would clinch and be up close. And it's always really difficult to to score when you're in close and working in that little short space. I thought when Humble stuck to his boxing, which is what his corner were, um, you know, employing him to do at times during the fight, um, you know, box, they were shouting, Jamie, box him, box him, you know, and he came out the corner, I think Ronnie wrote at one point, says, box his lugs off, man, box, you know, like, you know, because that's, he is, he was the better boxer, and I think when it came, you know, when they were up close and they were, you know, trading, that suited Woodmore, I think, he was landing some, you know, single shots, but he was, he was enjoying that. It was that was his type of fight, and I think uh, I think Jamie at times was, as you said, was maybe swinging and, and looking, for, you know, loading up at times as well, where they were saying, "No, box first, Jamie, and then try and take him out." You know, maybe he's, I think if he stuck to that game plan, but I thought Jamie did actually settle down sort of towards the mid rounds of the fight, and 
as I said to you yesterday, I think going into seven, I had him uh, well, at least 4-2 up, I think, at that point. Maybe he's even 5-1. I thought I'd give Chrissy Wood the second round. And, you know, if you look back to my tweets yesterday, which probably maybe look a bit foolish now, the last couple of tweets was, uh, you know, Humble has a wide lead here for me and also this is Humble's fight to lose. But, you know, I was only calling it as I seen well, it. Well, I, I agree with that, know. though. I, I think that was a fair assessment mm. because Chrissy Wood definitely finished the stronger. Um, in the last two rounds, he seemed to... <clears throat> know or sense that he needed to to win the last two rounds convincingly and he mm. came out and to be honest he probably did that um i know steve wraith who's obviously chrissy's uh, manager or promoter i'm not sure what his role exactly with that mm. um with chrissy is but mm. he had jamie one round up going into the last one and then if you give the last round to chris wood there's your draw now i'm not saying that i agree with that no but we spoke obviously to pretty much everyone we could yesterday in and the Lewis, fallout here we did, and yeah. Lewis Pendleton sort of the head honcho at fighting chance he had his phone out where he had, he'd scored each round how he'd done it and even though I had humble winning he gave a round to um, to Chrissy that I didn't mm. so I thought well actually then there's one round we've disagreed on yeah from my scorecard of humble winning by two take that away and give that one to Chrissy Wood and that's from a fighting chance perspective mm. There's your draw again, and it's not that I agree with it. I don't think it potentially was a draw, but I was just going to talk about the whole scoring thing, and obviously we've, well, we've covered see, it at detail and at length. Mm. But you can't. I think when there's only potentially one or two rounds in a fight, there's always that room for for splitting it. And obviously, one of the big big issues yesterday, and we talked about this, was for area titles. It's a massive amount of pressure and massive amount of pressure on the referee. Yeah, the referee has, a, as well, yeah. You know, has a hard enough job scoring and basically trying to gauge the work of both fighters in a four rounder. Yeah, never mind in a ten rounder where it's mm. quite close. He's separating the action. He's trying to referee and ensure the safety of the fighters. And then on top of that, he's got to decide who's producing the cleaner work. Mm, that's that it is an interesting point. That it is a good point. Do. Should Northern Area title fights, you know, have judges, basically? Is that something that, why why not? You know, is there not people from the board that can do this? Um, there's plenty of officials there from the board yesterday. Is, is there not more, is that not something that could be looked at? I don't know. I've seen on Twitter in the fallout, there's been a bit toing and froing between the certain, you know, more or less. It's good natured, but you can you can sense the disappointment in fighting chances, uh, fighting chances tweets. Um, they were using words such as robbery, which you don't really want to go down that route. Um I think it was all left yesterday, you know, respectful. Um, I know Jamie was devastated, you know, but we've seen backstage, they all spoke, everyone was shaking hands and they, let's go again. And I think that, it, it, you know, it's fortunately the winners here are the fans, I guess, you know, and people like ourselves. Um, because if that if that takes place again, you assume a Newcastle Gator this time rather than Darnton in, in March or February, March, then why not? Both lads are unbeaten. The title's... Uh, still vacant, you know. It'll definitely be sanctioned for a title again. Oh, it makes perfect uh, sense. It's the perfect fight out there for them. And without it, being the first fight was good, and people want to see it again. So. Yeah, I was going to say without being overly dramatic, the first fight was action packed, and both lads gave it their all. Mm. It was one of those where there weren't any knockdowns, there wasn't any sort of big cuts or big incidents mm. in that, but it was still an enthralling contest to watch and you couldn't take your eyes off it. So it was. They're both quite... Them to do it yeah. again over 10 rounds. Definitely. Uh, I know there's rumours of Eddie Hearn coming back to the region in, in March, maybe, with Lewis Fitzgerald and Josh Kelly. So maybe it's a it's a fight for the undercard for that. I think that would be the ideal scenario if that could somehow be televised on Sky Sports, either on the undercard of, of that show or even on the Facebook feed, you know, like Sky, like I do these days. Who knows, but... I think uh, both parties have close relationships with Matchroom, so maybe that's something that we can that we can look at. But I think it makes perfect sense to go again. Um, as I said, though, both great lads handle themselves well in the build up. Um, we interviewed them both um, in the lead up to the fight, and you know there was there was no bad blood. I think the way in apparently on Friday was like a silent way, and they're both quiet, really quiet lads. And you know there was a lot of respect there, and even even. When people didn't get the result that maybe they wanted yesterday, it was it was all good natured and you know people expressed their views and maybe they weren't happy, but it that, was it was just, all left amicable and respectful and you know it is open to go again. I think well you know why not? For me, that just shows all the build up and the respect there that you don't need this fake mm. rivalry, no, this intense beef as it's often labelled, and 
it's like a drama, a sort of sideshow to the boxing and I would prefer it if there were more contests like this where you've got rival promoters working together, two honest lads who similar ability in evenly matched fights and it makes for an entertaining boxing match. Well that's it and I think people up here now in the North East, as I said this last week, um, have a desire now, fighters and promoters alike, to sort of make these fights. Um, we've been blessed up here this year in the last couple of years that people are willing to put their records on the line and, and make these 50-50 fights. Um, you know, we've had Corp Whitfield, um, Corp Snaith, uh, Ritson, Ritson uh, Ellison, who was a good Northern Area title fight. Obviously, Ritson won well, but still, it, it was made, you know, and uh, we're blessed, really, and it's 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 nice that they were close together, and again, that's I think that'll, that'll easily see the fight made for next year, and I don't think there'll be anyone in that audience yesterday in Darlington that, uh, that wouldn't want to see that again. I know Stewie Hall was there, and Stewie Hall had Jamie Humble, Winning by two rounds, um, I think Troy Williams commented this morning that it was a close fight, and he'd like to see it again. So, you know, I, I think why not? Um, oh, it is. It's one that it was, was a crack. It, it was a. It, was it a deserves fight. to be showcased to a wider audience. Definitely, no, it definitely does. I know there was some sort of video footage you taken yesterday, and Steve Wraith mentioned that he'd be trying to put that out online as well, so people will be able to watch it and obviously make up their own mind. I think it is a shame that we've started there and we've, we've talked about what was an excellent mm. fight and it's still coming back to the judges it seems referee. the referee in this case the yeah. judge, singular judge yeah. and it just comes back and it, it seems every week we end up discussing some slightly dubious decision and it Smith is. Williams again there's a good little fight between them two the rematch and people are instantly oh 117 111 far too wide but then they're happy that it's 116 112 and again it's just mm. that one round difference of opinion I think yesterday skews the, mm. the overall impression of the scorecards as you say there's a lot of responsibility on the ref and you know let's I'm not for one minute thinking corruption spread the small hole shows in Darlin <laughs> you know I don't think it was a hometown decision or anything like that to, to no, it's the, what, I, I think it was just it there was, that was how the referee saw the fight and who are but we, not even who are, when there's you know, one ref, you see it when there are three judges at the highest level. Again, there's all the accusations of corruption go around, but mm. I honestly and maybe naively want to think that it is just the nature of it and that's not excusing it, but when you have something so subjective and Peter Shepperson mentioned yesterday with the ref... Chris Woods trainer. Mm. Yeah, sorry, Chris Woods trainer, if anyone is not familiar with him. He mentioned that... Like the ref's watching it, and from one angle, it might look like Chrissy's pulling yeah. Jamie's head down. From another angle, it might look like Jamie's piling into Chrissy's head. Subjective, yeah. It's that thing you've got them, even if you've got three judges sat different sides, they're going to, they're very close vicinity, they're watching the same action. They are going to see things slightly differently, and you can still have a competitive fight mm. with a very wide scorecard, or you could have a one sided fight in terms of. One boxer absolutely dominates around. It's hard or for two, it's and still mm, loses because it, the other lads nicked a couple of other closer rounds. It's hard to to pay any credence really to our scorecards. <laughs> Not that we don't know what we're talking about, but you know we it's we we try and stay impartial up here in the northeast where you know we've got no beef or there's no agenda with us we're not trying to sell papers or sell anything you know what i mean we're we're close to to everyone and, and we enjoy it that way but you know i think maybe sometimes as you say going into a fight you have you you sort of have your favourites do you know what I mean like I've personally I've been a big fan of Jamie Humble since he turned pro and I thought you know and I'll because you know we went to see him I went to see him during the week and I think oh what a canny lad and I like his you know and maybe you're closer to, to the Dalton lot because Chris you know you trained alongside Pete Shepherson and, and things like that and we the way we were sitting yesterday we were right in Jamie's corner so you know you, you sort of get emotionally attached during a fight so that was that was what I was saying. Maybe I did have Jamie Humble winning it quite widely, but it's it's hard to judge completely neutrally when you when you're from this part of the world yeah. and, and you're close to everyone. But again, so, there were only but, what three, four rounds max that you could say mm. one boxer won decisively. Yeah. Mm. There were again a lot of scrappy close rounds, yeah. and you think it's easy sort of as a throwaway comment to say, "Oh well, that could have gone either way," but I'm giving it this way. It'd be interesting, though. If someone else yeah. scores it the other way. Mm. Their scorecard's going to look drastically different to yours. It would be interesting to know whether Team Humble, Jamie himself, would approach it any differently again. Would they, you know... Yeah, because obviously... Would he, would he have done anything differently? Chris, he said... The team I guess he had to watch that again. He before thought he decided. started a bit slowly and he would look to maybe start quicker. And yeah. I mean, that's easier said than done because you start quicker, does he then finish as strong? And there's all these um, points to discuss and think about. But it would be interesting whether he 
Jamie would stick to his boxing a bit more and mm. maybe just for those that respect uh, Chrissy Wood a bit more or just a side of it that you don't see actually and I'm sure this is quite common knowledge because he put it on his own Facebook last night but Jamie Humble actually took himself off to hospital last night after the fight um, nothing too serious I believe but he did spend his Saturday night in A&E where he, uh, he actually had a family meal planned which was a shame he couldn't attend that um, and it's just a side you don't see you know he looked he looked in a bit of discomfort at the bell. Not that he'd taken a beating or anything, but just in a bit sort of physical pain. Um, and I guess you don't really see that side, you know. And uh, obviously we wish him well. I believe he's fine. He's okay. But I just maybe he's just suffering a bit after the fight. I don't know. Um, but obviously we wish him all the best in that. But it would be good to see him back, back early next year. Um, so, but much you know, massive respect to both to both lads and their camps and. It was all handled with dignity and respect, and as you like to say up here, you know, there's no egos, or there shouldn't be anyway. In Northeast boxing, <laughs> we're too small for that. Do you know what I mean? But, no, I don't think there is. Uh, at all. There's not. No, it was all respectful. It was a great day, and, uh, obviously, but just to sum up, and yeah, we'd we'd love to see the fight again, and hopefully, common sense will prevail, and both lads get the chance to do it again. Yeah, and then we'll have a look. Yeah, the card, there was so. four fights on the undercard. Um, there was meant to be a fifth, but. Paul Gidney from from Gated here had a unfortunately, you know, put well not he didn't pull out last minute, but his fight was withdrawn at the last minute due to some uh, bad unforeseen circumstances it with his opponent um, Luke, Luke Fash. Fash yeah, he he apparently suffered a family bereavement, so we're, we're really sorry to hear that, and we'll see our thoughts are with Luke at that time. Uh, this time, sorry, uh, devastating for Paul Gidney because, as you may know or may not know, he's been through a lot personally himself. Um, I think it's quite common knowledge now that his his daughter. Was suffering from cancer really so he had to put his but which i believe she's fine now but he had to put his boxing career on hold for a bit which is a shame because he had a you know sort of comeback fight lined up yesterday but that's it he's been stuck on i think two and oh for, for, for a while it seems indefinitely yeah i mean we saw him in his last bout i think wasn't it it's dunson fed dunson federation yeah fed brewery and mm. again look sharp scored a few knockdowns on which to a point decision Obviously, Mal Gates rates him really highly. In terms, mm. I think we've discussed this last week, didn't no, we? In terms we did, of that yeah. tune thing, it and we, but it was just a shame it's because tainted, of that, yeah, yeah, it's tainted a bit because last week we were saying how good it was that he's got this comeback and looking forward and to seeing him. And then local businesses helped out, sponsors came on board, and there was a really big effort from every, the northeast sort of boxing community and just to, to secure this fight for Jamie. And it and was a real shame. What can you delayed further? Is just, it's, it's I could only imagine the frustration he's going through. Oh, it is a shame, but as you say, circumstances and beyond his control. But going back to the action, um, it's another started. box. I was going to go down the card the other way, but oh, yeah, we'll stop. No, no. I was just going to say another boxer who's obviously going to be feeling a lot of frustration this morning is Neil Hepper, mm. um, a very popular Darlington boxer who he is. Yeah, he's had a few um, defeats already on his record and. I'd try to say a bit. He lost to Luke Campbell, didn't he? Yeah, he lost to Luke Campbell, lost to Kevin Hooper. So there's no disgrace there. He's he's fought on the road a bit earlier in his career, and I think since signing with Steve Wraith and moving over to train with Jeff Saunders Senior, he's had a little bit of a renaissance. He picked up a few wins and on sort of local shows, and being the home fighter seemed to really sort of spur him on. But he's another one who's suffered a bit in the build up um, he lost his ante on, I think it was this week or, or definitely within the last sort of week or so mm. um, he also mentioned that he'd suffered an injury in training a few weeks ago and I think a combination of those sorts of things contributed to yeah. a first round loss to Sean Pendry who I wasn't too familiar with no I wasn't with familiar this. with and we were looking at the programme yesterday and it had him listed from Mallorca, Spain and we did a bit background digging and I think it was a coach his coach his trainer was a guy called Paul Hamilton who was quite a respectful Darlington boxing figure who moved to Spain, so I think he must have set up a bit of a gym over there as well as you know, I think his other business over there as well. And this this guy came over and he immediately when they got in the ring he I thought, Oh, he's a big fella, you know what I mean? He he was big and he really took the fighter to, to Neil quite early on and he was clubbing these punches in just from all angles and really landing with some heavy shots which unfortunately Neil didn't go down did he go down once or not? I can't recall that now. But he, he was, Got a sort of standing count. I don't know if it was a standing eight count, count yeah. or if the referee had deemed that he was held up by the ropes because mm. he caught a shot that sort of buzzed him. Yeah. And rather than again easier said than done for us to sit watching, rather than hold, trying to hold or mm. trying to box and avoid the punishment, obviously the natural instinct, isn't it? He's wanting to fight back and land something of his own. He and gave a really honest, good he, go. He did. He landed as well, but it was just whenever these shots were coming in, his head, his head was going back. They were and really they wide really hooks, weren't they? Uh, they were they were landing. Right. And again, yeah, obviously he got sort of a little bit of a benefit from the ref and got the count and mm. sort of 
briefly, I think, for maybe a 30 second period, looked to sort of have ridden it a bit. Yeah. But then again, again they it came, was just they came the back, sort of they came in again, yeah. Hard, clean shots, and quite a number of them sort of backed him up, and the ref stopped him on his feet. It was just a shame, obviously, in front of his home crowd, he's a popular, really popular lad in Darlington. And, you know, as we talked about last week, he uses social media well, and he's he's quite engaging. And, you know, he's he was. Obviously, looking forward to yesterday, and as you should, boxing in front of your hometown crowd, and there's a lot of support there for him, and it, it just ended quite sadly, really. And we we caught, you know, we were sort of in his dressing room a bit backstage after the fight, and he was he was absolutely devastated, you know, he was gutted, and it's a shame to see that, isn't it? Um, but you know, he's obviously been going through a lot personally. Whether he should have fought or not, who knows? He obviously thought the decision was was right to fight, as is his trainer, or they wouldn't have put him in there. But but it's just a shame for Neil, it really is. But hopefully, you know, he can sort out. You know, he's been through a lot so probably spend a bit of time with his family now and let's hope to see him back there's yeah. fights there to be made for Neil local fights you know maybe now that's the route to go down and try and get in these 50-50 fights I know Peter Cope was mentioned and Peter himself coming off a loss maybe that's something that can be looked at in the future I don't know but uh, it was just I a shame there are a number of uh, sort of fighters at a similar point I think in the North East within mm. maybe one or two weight classes so there are yeah. definitely interesting fights Tom, out Tom, there for Tom Neil Whitfield could be a potential fight I know that was yeah. briefly mooted in the build up but didn't materialise but but this guy from Spain uh, the Sean Penry I thought bloody hell where have they got him from uh, well his record he big. had one win mm. and two draws on his record so again uh-huh. not massively experienced I don't think the matchmaker probably knew too much about him he looked really big for the weight in terms of compared to Neil uh, he was a bit taller a bit broader and obviously that told in some of the shots that he was landing. Yeah, 100%, yeah, it did. Uh, he, was, um, he was he was big, he was impressive. Uh, there was a lot of respect shown, you know, it was straight at the bell. He was straight over to Neil just to see how he was doing and stuff. But Yeah, it was. It's always like, nice to uh, see that. But Especially with his this, with this trainer having local connections. And, I think, yeah, you know, it, it really sort of almost symbolised what the whole uh, the show was about, wasn't it? Like the North East boxers well, and how they do look out for each other. And obviously yeah. lads... He's done the business. He should have been delighted. And he probably probably was. <laughs> but um, took the time out to go and see Neil in his corner on his stool. Had a few words for him. And again, really, really nice to see. And no, definitely always is. impressed by that sort of thing. But uh, aside from that, it was a it was a successful day all around for the for the local fighters on the undercard. Um, it was Richard O'Neill that got the um, got the action underway yesterday. He was the first fight on. He's another Darton fighter, um, and he was fighting. The Ryan Goodridge from Wales, who it was actually it was a four round fight. It was a really really good fight. Um, well, he was another one who mm. was in the away corner, and he he didn't have a particularly bad losing record, did he? He was he came to win the fight hundred percent, and I think that you know instead of just going through the motions like a, a journeyman, in, right, he came with, he came with a winning came, record though. Yeah, he a did. lot of ambition to boot. I mean, and he came to win, and it was it made for a really good four rounder, and it was it's refreshing to see you know people come to win fights uh, rather than just sort of surviving and. You know, going through the motions, and I think I gave uh, Garant Goodridge the first round. Ah, I definitely, well. ah, definitely did. Yeah, yeah. I thought bloody hell, Richie's, when he was on a fight. Richie yeah. started yeah. a little bit slowly, and obviously settled into it. Won the other three on my card, and again, it was a, just a really little entertaining little fight. Um, we spoke to Richie afterwards. He says he was obviously happy with the win. He, he says, was happy with it. He, he mentioned him um, mm. wanting to box on the road a bit as well. Ah, in the I think he because seems, yeah, he, did. he wants to avoid basically fighting a lot of journeymen, and he wants to get involved with. Other fighters with winning records who want to come to win and believes that the best version of him mm. will come out against ambitious fighters. No, he did say that and it was refreshing to hear that. Um, it is, it's nice to see. And he, nice wanted to more, he wants more rounds as well. I think he, he finished the fight well and I think it must be frustrating that when you you know, you finish in the fourth round, you, you're probably thinking, oh, I could go again here. You know, I could, there's more, there's maybe at least two more rounds left in me here, but you know, it, it was good to see him. Uh, again, another popular Darlington fighter. It was a good interview after with him actually, um, which will be up soon. And maybe today or tomorrow. Yeah, they'll be uh, up later today. All the video content that we got from the event. He won. He won the fight forty thirty seven. But credit to credit to him and and Goodridge actually. Just as I said, he came up from Wales. Um, you know, and he gave it a real good go, and it was it was a good it was a really good fight. I uh, enjoyed it. Enjoyed it a lot. Um, after that, we had a couple of pro debuts on there, didn't we? We yeah, had one pro debut. Was Terry Tyers not a pro debut? No, it was his second. Well, there we go. We had one pro <laughs> debut on there. <laughs> it was on the, I think it was on the programme as his pro debut, yeah, well, but I right. actually S- saw his pro debut a few weeks ago in Hartlepool. Sack Peter, man. S- uh, <laughs> no, no. So, yes, we had one pro debut on there, but we'll talk about Terry Tyers first with his second pro. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he was in another, he's another Turbo Terry had turbo, on his shorts there. Turbo Terry, yes. But, um, What's your thoughts on him? I think he boxed quite well, to be honest. It's... 
again, it's always tricky to. We say this all the time, but it is hard to judge the um, the boxers when they're so early in their careers. Mm. But he was always in control. I think really there wasn't any sort of danger no. for him against uh, who was he fighting? So I've lost that. Oh, it was Mike Castell, who's from the John Murray gym. Yeah, he is a, a, a boxer who's lost a few. So I think maybe didn't have that ambition or belief that he was going to win, yeah. but he was still. Mm. No, there in, you know he was, he was. He was. He was going for it as well. It was, it was, yeah, he did well. He did well. Uh, tires. Um, popular fighter again. You know, a lot of support there. I keep saying this, but there was. Um, it's great to see everyone out supporting supporting local fighters as well. You know, it was all lads on the show were well supported. It was an afternoon show as well for those of you who don't know. Which an afternoon show on a Saturday is quite rare, I guess. It threw us a little bit. It did for us because I was trying to keep in track of the Newcastle score at the same time. <laughs> but, uh, Probably best to avoid that. Never talk about that. So, you know, again. Um, but it was. Um, he was well supported, and on he goes to two and zero. So um, good luck to him, and it was nice to see him. And uh, then uh, the debutant who the debutant, was actually the, making the his actual debut, debut was, was Ellis Corey, another I was one who with him. is another lad who trains out of the um, Dalton Boxton Martial Arts Gym uh, under the stewardship of Pete. Peter Shepperson, uh, he's transitioned from Mai Tai, mm. so obviously more of a, I want to say, sort of, well, martial art for want of a better yeah, way, yeah, more, yeah. um, using the kicks, and it's really fascinating, because one of my friends who sort of helped train me with the boxing side of it, he's, you know, ding, ding. He, yeah. he practices ding Mai Tai, yeah. and, he's had a fight, you know, uh, <laughs> well, if I'd been in a proper fight with this lad, I'd have been absolutely destroyed, because, uh, he was saying with the boxing stance, you're just so open mm-hmm. to getting your legs kicked. Yeah. He says, him looking and his natural reaction would be just sweep my legs and mm. then I'm like down. Mm. So obviously, for Ellis, who's, I think, we said he's been training boxing for about 10 weeks, a little bit over that. Um, it's yeah. crazy as like, for that for that pro fight and just those subtle changes that you think, oh, well, he can, he can kick box, so he can box quite easily. He's basically retraining his brain and his, yeah. his body to do diff- very subtle, different movements. I know after the fight, Steve Wraith, you know, he said he could see a bit of that old style still there. And but you know, I, I think what Pete said, you know, it's, it hasn't been long at all. But I was impressed with him. I thought the first round he first, looked, he looked a bit nervous, a bit excited, a bit edgy, yeah, on yeah, his definitely. toes a lot. Yeah, no, I mean he still won the round for me, but from that point, I don't know if it was case mm. or right. He's got that out of the way. He really boxed well in, yeah, in the definitely. fourth round. Uh, David Zabricki, who was a tough lot man, he fought From previously. Leeds, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Um, in the Matt Job show that I watched last week, and I thought that he was very close to stopping him at one point. I thought the stoppage was there for him if he wanted it, but there was maybe he's leaving it a few seconds. That he didn't really unload it as such, but the shots he was landing were really clean. Powerful looking shots as well, and I thought if he wanted to force that stoppage there, I think he could have. Um, the I, ref I was looking it was, very closely at it for a long part of the last round. What I liked about him it was measured. Nothing was nothing was wild, and you know he wasn't. It was very calculated, and you know it was. It looked like a young man that was really thinking about what he was doing in there, especially in the fourth round. Um, shades, and I'm not saying he's as good as or will be as good as, but shades of Chris Eubank Jr. in there, and sort of in his stance and in the way he threw them sort of single big powerful shots and then stood off again, measured, it was, measured his yeah, opponent you again. You definitely see that. Um, the again, confidence was flown by the fourth and final round. You, I was, honestly, I was really was impressed. The and, sort of fluidity of it, and again, that Muay Thai background mm, probably will help him there, because yeah. a lot of that is smooth sort of movements rather than, I don't know how to describe the more traditional boxing yeah. movements. And it will pose a few problems for opponents because and they're not going to be too sure of what to expect from him. And he's only 20 as well, and he's got absolutely, you know, plenty of time on his side. But his pro debut's out of the way now. He's got, you know, he's, he's, as I said, he's 20. He's got a lot of time, uh, a lot of time to learn, sorry. And, you know, again, it'll be interesting to see. I think another one that was hoping for an active 2018 is again. And as we touched on, boxing and Dalton sort of thriving at the minute, and with especially with fighters like him coming through, young fighters. And, um, Impressed, long may it continue again um, there'll be an interview coming up in the, in the next day or so with him as well online so yeah so just to that. recap I think a fantastic way to end boxing in the North East that's all of the uh, card discussed yeah that's the five fights we've talked the main event the five fights uh, Neil Harper yeah. Corey yeah. Ellis Corey Richard O'Neill and Terry right. Tires uh, yeah and just as we like to say you know, thank you to Steve Wraith again it was his promotion uh, but thank you to Steve for again allowing us access yesterday and you know he's, he's just lets us have a run of the play. You know, we do what we want. We go backstage and do interviews, and you know the access and the opportunities he gives us uh, are, you know, second to none, and we're extremely grateful for that. And 
And he passed on a lot of thanks as well when we were speaking to him to like the likes of the coaches yeah, and the he trainers. Did. Yeah, yeah. Because what a lot of people don't say at this level is they drum up a lot of interest in the mm. local area. It's all very well saying, yeah, these boxes are popular and yeah. they are and obviously they've got friends who want to come and see them. But from the commercial side of it, I know Peter Shepperson in particular has worked really hard to get some sponsorship deals for his fighters. Obviously, Mal Gates done the same for Paul Gidney, who mm. unfortunately wasn't on the card. But a lot, a lot of time and effort outside of the gym from the trainers goes course, into yeah. that. And obviously, there was a lot of sponsors there that, without that, without the show, no, without that, them, the show mm-hmm. wouldn't have gone ahead. And no, definitely, wouldn't it have is. been as successful. Uh, but yeah, it was a great way to end. Uh, what's been a really good year for Northeast boxing. Um, obviously, we've got the British champions now too. Um, but you know, beneath that level, small hall wise, it's uh, it's thriving. Um, it's bubbling up nicely, isn't it? There's it a is, few that you think mm. could make that level. We've always sort of questioned it and thought, oh, well, our lads have just haven't had the rub of the green. They've had to take the mm. fights away from home. Whereas I think there's seeing Tommy Ward and Lewis Ritten get yeah, the yeah, British titles. Course, obviously. Glenn Foote obviously went on the road Josh, and won Josh, the English title. Josh Leather Glenn Foote was another great fight. That's really caught interest in the region. Lately there's a well. lot of local prospects, I think, that could be in 2018 making that step up to the, the more well-known national scene, the domestic level. I think early 2018 for those of you not from this part of the world who do listen and who follow us on Twitter and stuff and maybe we'll do another sort of wants to watch list you know and maybe list six to ten fighters of northeast prospects that we think you should maybe keep an eye on and then in, in 2018 upset, no, we'll, we'll remain impartial as ever but uh, yeah we'll uh, you know it's, it's nice to do these things and give people an insight into boxing in our region really but a very good day very enjoyable afternoon of the boxing um, loved it there were some other domestic shows last night. So I know you were more on the MTK. Was it London? Was it down in it was. I was. I was uh, watching. I got home. I was watching the. Uh, sorry, it's all right. Uh, just introducing it. From there. <laughs> it was, uh, Go for it. It was the. I got home from about six. So obviously, I watched the end of Arsenal Man United, which is a good game. And then I put on the spike spike coverage. Um, and uh, there was a really good fight on there. Actually, Jamal Smiley and Lennox Clark was a cracking uh, cracking fight that. Clark won it, but uh, both men put up a great, valiant effort in that. Uh, really good fight. Uh, anyway, but then, obviously, I guess, like a lot of people out there, a lot of eyes last night were on David Price, um, the Liverpool heavyweight making his comeback fight after, you know, a bit of a rough time lately with well, his form's just dipped, really, you know. He hasn't had a good run of late, Pricey, um, but, you know, he's made the decision to carry on, and that was being shown on the MTK at London show, which was being streamed on the IFL um, YouTube channel last night from the Brentwood Centre in Essex. Um, as I say, I was watching the majority of the, the, the fights on um, Channel 5 and Spike, but I did tune into that for David Price. Uh, pff, David Price. Um, as you've probably seen on social media last night, he's, he's I guess he's a guy that sort of he's divides opinion at the minute. Um, and I say this, and I think a lot of people have a big interest in David Price because probably because he's such a nice fella and you know people people wish him well and there was people out there last night that were I think there was two sides to the coin really some were saying bloody hell retire now don't do any further you know you're done you're finished you you know you're an accident waiting to happen you've got no confidence no conviction in there whereas the other side of the, the coin was good to see the big man back you know he's, he's done the round 60-54 against uh, you know you know, durable opponent, I guess, and he did that. But, and I guess I fall somewhere between the two. I was going to ask opinion. which side do you fall uh, on? I guess I'm between the two. There is a side of you, and there's a side of me that I guess now, you know, without exaggerating, I sort of watch David Price through me through my fingers at times. Do you know what I mean? Because I've watched the Tepa fight, the Hammer fight, and you know, it's the Thompson fight, and there's nothing nice about seeing David Price sprawled out on the canvas. Or do you know what I mean? Like, because he's such a as you say, a nice fella, and there shouldn't be really anyone in British boxing that's got a bad word to say about the personality of David Price. Um, I think that's probably fair to say. I think I don't think there are many that that would criticise him. He's not going yeah. to get abuse like an O'Hara Davis or yeah, Chris Eubank he's, Jr. He's, he's not, not a villain. Adverted, yeah, he's not going to polarise his opinion with yeah, that. However, man. that obviously isn't translating, mm. and all of those well wishes aren't translating into the boxing ring for him because. Sokolowski last night is an opponent that I think even if you've got ambitions of being in the British level of heavyweights, mm. you should be dispatching him and, and getting him out of there. Was it was it um 
was it a conscious decision to not dispatch him? Surely they would face his fight hand and take that sort of if he wanted. Was it a, was it a, an exercising of the demons maybe and thinking, you know, just to prove to himself that he can go six rounds without gassing? And to be honest, he was blown quite heavy at the end of the That's six. That's what I mean. If he's, was it a, he's struggling towards the end. He's not struggling with the fight as such, but. I think 60-54 is very generous, by the way. Do you? I right. think Sokolowski won at least one of the rounds, clearly, maybe even two. Mm. Not going to push for a draw, and it's obviously no, relevant the fact that no. he's lost the fight. But mm. I don't think Price looked particularly comfortable in there, considering who he was facing. There was definitely nerves, which is probably understandable in his first fight back. Um, he didn't. No, as I said, there was a part. I would yeah. say that going the six rounds would do him wonders if it was like a physical issue mm. and obviously he's tiring which you can say is a problem physically but I think what you've just mentioned there is the nerves he seems to burn off a lot of energy mm. just through those nerves and if you're six foot seven six foot eight whatever he is the size he is, the weight he is, yeah, yeah. and he obviously has power. He can knock guys out. He's, he, he, went, at, he went to say twenty nil, didn't he? He, he did that on his route to the British and Commonwealth titles mm. and. Far be it for me to say, oh, you know, hang them up for a tie, you, you're done. You've got to respect someone's choice to come back. He's you? making it a sort of quite realistic one. He's not ex- saying he's going to get back to world level. He's wanting to get to the British level. But then you think, well, he's done that already in his career. What mm. what else has he got to prove? Will Maybe it be yeah. a massive achievement for him to get back to winning a British title? Which, by the way, he's not guaranteed to do by any stretch of the imagination. No, he, he's not. Um, you know, you've got to respect someone's choice to come back, I guess. And... You know he did. He won the fight. Um, um, there is a bit of me, as I said, that watches Pricey through me fingers now. I think, oh god, you know, whenever a shot lands, maybe that's how he feels because there, there was some people on Twitter saying, oh, he's scared to take a punch and stuff. And there is a bit of a rabbit in the headlights look, even when Sokolowski was, uh, you know, winging away, and you thought, oh god. But well, that's it. Every time it and- Price poured out with the jab, Sokolowski's mm. throwing a big overhand right, and even someone of his size, you know, mm. a massive opponent for. Price physically, yeah. you think if he connects, yeah, he's got price in bother. And there was one at left hand that sort of landed, and it didn't wobble him as such, but it just stopped him in his tracks. And you think, what is the end goal? Where is he going to get to? And Scott Gillen actually asked us on Twitter, where do you think he goes next, and what level do you think he's at? I think we've covered the sense of where we think he's at. He's I got think, a lot of work to do. Uh, yeah, he has to get lot, it to yeah. British level. Um, he's uh, actually said, how do you think he would fare against the likes of Dave Allen? And he personally thinks that even Dave Allen, a bit disrespectful to Dave there, <laughs> gives him very tough night's work. Um, I agree with that, purely because Dave Allen is tough, durable, and can go the 12 rounds. He's proven that. He can go the 12 round distance. He's in good shape now as well. Anyone yeah. that can take what Price has to offer and drags him beyond the six rounds is going to give him That's problems. It. But the key with Price is that right Price hand. giving himself problems. It's that right hand. If he, you know, if he landed flush with Dave Allen, then you don't know. But I don't know. I think it's it seems to me now that it's sort of this is David Price. It's like the start of a brand new career. You've sort of got to forget about what happened before now and just think. I don't think you know, people it's can. It's hard. It's hard to do that. It's His hard potential to, opponents yeah. aren't going to be forgetting. It. I know they're it going is. To be, no, of course they're going not. to be scrutinising it and thinking. But, for example, you've got Daniel Dubois, who. You think as soon as he connects, I think that would be the it. Mm. It would be That's the end. That's the thing now with David Price. He's in is a it, division where the notorious mm. for big hit, like the biggest hitters in the sport. Is it is it similar now to Audrey Harrison, where people are sort of going to watch him as a bit of a freak show? And I don't mean this derogatory at all, because I, I love Pricey, and hey, there's no bigger Pricey fan than me. Back in the day, I, I loved him. And I was full on on the David Price hype train, me, and you know. But now, you know, when Audley was on, it was a bit of a yeah, a bit of a joke towards the end, wasn't it? And you were you were watching him, and people were watching him to see him get beaten. You don't want to see David Price become sort of a laughing stock, really. And you know, people are wanting to watch him just to see who connects. And you know, and it's not nice, is it? And but you know, he, as we said, he's 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 decided to go again, and this is what he's going to face. He's going to face, you know, ex- uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ex- not exposure. You know, like people are going to um, scrutiny. Scrutiny. That's the one. That the word you're looking for. People are going to scrutinise him, and maybe maybe he doesn't like that. Maybe he's you know he feels it's a bit unfair. And hey, he's, he's, he's as you say, he's been a British and Commonwealth champion, and if that is lot, and if that does prove to be his lot, then he's had a better career than most. And, oh yeah, like for no blast you know, I mean, but that's why I don't really see. He does seem to have taken it to the, his credit. He seems to have taken a res- you know a respectful step back now, and he's maybe realised that he was a 
bit of a joke when he used to keep banging on about world titles after he'd been beat off people like Tepa and you know. See, and I think though that as a boxer to get to any level of success, mm. you need that. I think it's very very hard for a yeah. boxer to think right. I'm going to get to British level, and then get there mm. and to be that like to be a, a notable achievement. And it is a, it is a great achievement for a boxer to be a British champion, but. You look mostly, and again, it's a general statement, mm. the boxers that become British champions are the ones who aspire to be world champions. You've got to have yeah. that little the level of confidence and almost delusion that you are the best in the world every time you step in that ring. There's I think if you don't, mm. if you are limiting yourself before you get in that ring, mm. you're in bother. I just think you look at him and he did look a bit nervous last night. Obviously, that's understandable. He looks, you know... There was well, that's, good that's there in was, a quiet six uh, rounder there away was, from the sort of no, big no, lights. There was, if this he's in a, yeah. a, fif, a 50 50 fight or a fight against, mm. like, so, say, Joe Joyce, who already mentioned Dubois, Tyson Fury. even Dave yeah. Allen, Tyson Fury, I, I, I can't believe that that has been, that that up, has been mooted. Well, that's it. Is, is that a fight that makes sense in a way? Is it a win for Tyson, a big payday for Pricey, and that may be it? I don't know, but who knows? But And I, again, on, almost on that freak show level, it probably will draw some. By the way, I don't it, think it's a fix show. It'll shot. draw an audience. It will, of course it will. But I just, you know, he's he's made the decision to go again. He's won the fight, and this my only thing with Pricey is that he seems to have rolled the dice a few times now. He's done the Sauerland thing, you know. He's boxed on undercards in Germany, and you know, away from the public eye, and he's he's tried that. He's tried. Uh, he was with Dave Caldwell he's previously. Dave Caldwell, he, he got the American fellow over, I can't remember his name now, the American trainer to work alongside his other coach. Well, Lennox uh, Lewis did yeah, a bit of it. Lennox Lewis, point. and you know, he's, he, now he's with Derry Matthews and Georgie Vaughan last night, and again, he obviously Scout says he probably feels comfortable with them, but you know, he's rolled the dice, he's tried a few different things now, David Price, um, trainers, promoters, etc. Now, you know, small hall show made perfect sense last night, but there's still a lot of people watching on YouTube, and as you see, we'll get scrutinised, but he's made the decision to go again and you know and he won the fight there is positives to take from it if you want to talk positives you know his his, his right hand is probably still there his jab when he threw it with conviction was decent his footwork when he actually used it you know instead of just stepping back in straight lines when he actually boxed and he's all amateur style was there you know and he can box he's no he's no mug do you know what I mean I just think but I just think there's, there's always that rabbit in the headlights thing with David yeah. Price, and I, I watch, I watch him used, nervously. I, I do. don't think he used his jab well enough. Mm. Enough. No, he didn't. Most of it, he yeah. was pouring it out. I don't think there was evidence there that he was willing to throw the right hand for mm. whether fear of what's coming back or fear of con- um, burning the energy. And I just think that as soon as he makes the step up again, it'll be the same. And yeah, you've just said there he's d- he's done the. A lot of different things. He's tried different things, yep. different trainers, different camps, different uh, promoters. He's been based himself in Germany, away from the sort of glare of the UK media, and he keeps getting the same results. So there's obviously something there. Yeah. And I honestly, I loved. I would have loved for him to have gone on and done it. And, Me too. Yeah. Of course. And continued that initial um, momentum that he had, but mm. I just can't see how he gets. I think it's just a case of watching Up the space. That level again. It is. It's watching the space now. As I say, he's made the decision. Um, he was talking about fighting again in February, which I think for a fighter like Price, he's good. Um, you know, because he, he's a big lad. You know, I think it would help him to stay in the gym over Christmas and go again and, and take it slow. Maybe fight a similar opponent last night. There's no need for David Price to rush now. And you know, and if this is helping him, you know, exercise his demons and mental side of it, then take it as slow as you want. There's there's no need to rush and. You know, as Scott asked the question, what's what's out there for Pricey? Well, there's no shortage of fights out there for me in in you know in the middle or long term. There's well, this leads actually to another question we've been asked. Yeah, sure, um, yeah. Fighting okay. Chance PR said, what series would work? Colin featuring yeah. only British based boxers at British level. So he said the prize fighter was actually a massive success in the past. You've got this last man standing, sort of mm. similar format coming in Ireland, and then obviously the super series, the super series of boxing. I think Price Fighter was a success, but I think it was past the sell by date. I think it was quite tight by the end. Well, I know Eddie Hearns mentioned that a lot of people, and you take what he says with a pinch of salt, but a lot of people have said to him, "Oh, when's Price Fighter come back? Why, like, why?" I think they were maybe just too common by the end. But that's uh, the thing; it was happening so regularly and so yeah. often that again, you just you get. Oversaturated with it a bit. Well, I mean, there's a lot of I kids out there. Got fed up in domestic slash local level. I would think, what oh, fancy me chances and a bit of a you know. Glenn of course, we're trying to win, what was it thirty two thousand? Probably be a bit higher price now. But, but 
as Definitely. you say, if we're talking about hypothetical tournaments just featuring domestic level British fighters, then heavyweight's probably your one because just to name some names off the top of your head, you've got Dave Allen who's still around that level. Um, you've got Sam Sexton's the British champion. So if you're talking British champion and beneath, you know, then you're talking that. You've got David Price, obviously. Uh, David Price probably throws that in the ring now. There, Gary Cornish, Joe Joyce, Gary Cornish, some successful challenger. Nathan Joe, Gorman, jo- yeah, Nathan Gorman, yeah. There's there's definitely people out there. Um, Nick Webb, people like that, you know. There's, there's I would quite happily sort of watch that over a few months if they sort of all paired off and fought each other. And some of them have different ambitions. Whether someone like Daniel Dubois would want to, you know, is he just happy doing his own thing with Frank Warren? And uh, who knows? Same with Joe Joyce. Are they sort of like maybe more elite prospects than being clogged in with domestic level heavyweight? But I don't know. They might fancy the chances to win it. And well, that's what Joe Joyce fought Ian Lewis in his debut. So you think he's another name, quite happy yeah, yeah. to mix it with the domestic yeah. ones and. Say, if you factored in the British title to that as the yeah. sort of end goal, the prize, yeah, it would be a good little step. But I think the reason that it's working so well in the Super Series mm. is that there's obviously a lot of money there for them. They're at a point where the elite they, fighters they can mean, wait a yeah. little bit between fights. Yeah, they got the chance to get world titles out of it at the end and basically the cruiserweight one's going to prove who's the man at a very, very competitive division. Oh, indeed, yeah. Super middleweight, you've got Groves and Eubanks come out of it, so that's going to generate a lot of cash. Obviously, De Gale's a missing factor, but you like, think what, De Gale would fight the winner of that tournament. Yeah, just what you're saying there, does someone like Dubois or Frank Warren want his fighters tied up at such an early stage in their career to have three fights mapped out for them? Yeah, and Potentially three tougher fights than they may have had mm. without it, so... It could work, and I know Channel oh, 5 did one a while back, didn't they, for like the English, mm, the, was it the British yeah, light yeah, heavyweight, yeah. Travis right. Dickinson did, yeah. was involved. Travis, I. Um, but no, yeah. it could work, and especially with names, as we say, on that sort of domestic scene, though, have probably got nothing to lose now, say, Gary Cornish, for example, you know, he, he lost the British fight against uh, Sexton, and you think, well, why not, go for it, you know, yeah. Dave Allen's Throwing desperate for a fight, I bet you, because obviously it seems like Lenroy Thomas has fell through again this week, which is such a shame for Dave. Because he got himself in great shape, and you know Dave Allen wants fights now. You know he's desperate for a fight. Um, Pricey's on the comeback trail. There's names out there. Sam Sexton will have to defend at some point his British title. So, uh, I think in answer to Colin's question, and thank you for the question, Colin. You always ask a good one. Um, that that's uh, that's a good uh, that's a good division as any uh, to to you know do a hypothetical domestic tournament. Certainly, any more that's fitting away for you. Um, to be honest, no. I mean, I know we've talked about the light heavyweight division and the fact that there was almost a sort of semi-final thing set up by the mm. board when you've got like, Bullioni to fight Callum Johnson mm. and it was Anthony Yard sort of mandated to fight Jose Burton and obviously rival politics mm. and promoters got in the way there but that would have been, a, for me, it made perfect sense if what Anthony about, Yard yeah, goes yeah. and beats Jose Burton if he's as highly touted as... Mm. Frank Warren yeah. believes he is they could have made that fight he could have done him and gone and fought yeah. the winner of Cal- oh, yeah, you got Cal- well what was yeah, well, then Bullioni Craig Richards in the end you've got Callum Johnson kicking about who will be desperate for a fight yeah that's it there's but a few at similar level but whether I don't know about now, that you know Frank Warren and guys like Eddie Hearn they sort of build their shows I think around, but if that question had been posed six months or yeah. a year ago I'd have definitely said super lightweight mm. with the likes of Josh Taylor, O'Hara Davis, yeah. Robbie Davis Jr. Um, Tyrone Nurse was the British champion. Jack that, Catterall's just beaten for that recently. What's, what's Bradley Saunders got left? Uh, John Wayne Hibbert, you know. There's a lot Curtis of Woodhouse very entertaining. Is, what else is back in the mix? A lot of very entertaining fights to be made at that weight. However, I think because of the progress Taylor's made, he's probably elevated himself beyond that. Yeah. Um, he's going to be looking at a world title next year, but without doubt. Jeff Saunders. Uh, yeah. yeah, Jeff Saunders could easily be in that mix. Um, I think Tyrone Nurse obviously lost the British, so he'd be mm. more than happy to mix cool it with again. the others. Yeah, and again, there's still some entertaining fights to be made there. Robbie Davis Jr. coming back from a loss as yeah, well. Yeah, he is, yeah. So maybe just, there's just the momentum there has stalled a little bit with that division in terms of the what were mouth mouth watering clashes. Mm-hmm. Now maybe less appealing yeah or appealing but yeah less appealing than maybe you know there's, there's names there though and I think obviously I think Curtis Woodhouse is fighting John Wayne Hibbert is that now confirmed next year I I'm don't sure, know was, I'm sure that was mooted is it? with a different opponent on Twitter every day uh, Woodhouse true true but no there is names there that even without a tournament say that you know there's people that in those lists we've just mentioned that are desperate for fights next year and especially Bradley Saunders I'd love to see him back and see what he's got left with his hands and whatever I know he fought in the next gen show and won but um 
But no, let's let's hope for a crack in 2018 that will make some. Uh, again, maybe some of you look at you know potential matches for next year. Who would like to see? Etc. It's uh, something to discuss in the future for for definite. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. You mentioned earlier the uh, Channel Five card that was on last night. Did, I did. Did you catch the main event of that? I did. Uh, well, I was sort of. It was on at the same time as Pricey, so I was sort of watching Pricey on yeah. the iPad. And <laughs> I think we both did you, the same thing. And you, yeah. get, you get on the telly. Uh, massive congratulations to uh, Chantelle Cameron, by the way. She was absolutely sensational last night. Um, fantastic. Looks just such a such a strong woman at that at the way, and she was the punches she was landing were just phenomenal there. Uh, she scored a great, a great win, great stoppage win to uh, win a version. I say a version, no. uh, an IBO world title. But a delight for her and the McGuigans and all the team behind her. But anyway, yeah, the main event. Um, what was your thoughts? You maybe watched it a bit closely, more closely than me when I was watching. Yeah, so Pricey. Um, Joe Hughes was fighting the Swedish and I think of Turkish descent as well, Anthony Yigit. Uh, who Can you dig it, Yigit? What? A nickname and entrance song for yeah. those of you who are familiar with what was the WWF. I'm not referring to it as WWE. <laughs> um, Anthony, can you dig it? Yig it came out to Booker T's entrance theme, and it was I think Twitter exploded with all the boxing and wrestling <laughs> fans on there. It was amazing. Um, so he came in as quite a heavy favourite, mm. um, obviously defending the European title. Joe Hughes had done remarkably well. Amazing, Joe uh, Hughes. And the honest stories. He going. was phenomenal, yeah. I mean, Channel 5 did a great little vignette on that as well before the fight, just to sort of highlight Good word. what it was. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with them occasionally. <laughs> and he, um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the story, aren't aware, Joe Hughes was, um, I think, born or from an early age, suffered with a condition that restricted the movement in his right arm. And basically I do a lot of sort of physio work and recovery to get just sort of a basic level of yeah, movement yeah, right, yeah. and his right arm was actually significantly shorter than his left so when wow. he's boxing he predominantly uses the left hand he's very limited in what he can actually use his right hand for That's incredible that. so and he's still got that level with, to, with that to think that he boxed Tyrone Nurse to a draw and then get to a European title shot is absolutely remarkable and he came out very determined to prove that he wasn't just there to make up the numbers. I am um, sort of scoring unofficially. He had his moments for He took so. the first two rounds quite comfortably. You yeah. get started very, very slowly. And Hughes was closing the gap, working the body really well. And then I think the class of you get then sort of showed he settled mm. a bit and boxed to a wide unanimous points win. Yeah. And I don't think there was any arguments from Hughes or from the sort of commentators and Cyclone and what have you. Mm. He boxed really, really well in spurt I would say and controlled the action very very well over the sort of second half of the fight in particular um, south paw you get so obviously yeah. right hand jab moving well and very very tidy and once he settled into that rhythm it was very hard for Hughes to sort of keep pace with him and, and disrupt that and I think late on in the fight there was signs where I think Hughes' effort maybe caught up with him a bit and you get was mm. picking him off and had he had maybe two or three rounds more, could yeah. have forced the stoppage. But it did look that way. It was a hard the twelve Marcel, rounds yeah. for from both men for different reasons. Mm. I think Yigit had to be on his game for those twelve rounds. So obviously had that to contend with and yeah. work hard in that sense. Hughes pressing the action, knowing probably again that he was losing the fight, yeah. having to sort of get a bit more desperate and was getting tagged and marked up quite badly with some of the shots. And yeah, I mean, it was, I see, uh, a, it was Josh, a fair decision mm, to be honest. Josh Taylor was obviously cycling show, but he was doing the punditry as well for Channel Five last night. Um, he was, and what before was the on that? well, I'd actually tweeted out before the fight that I, I was like, wondering that. if he'd be there, and sort of obviously seen him there. I thought, right, brilliant. This is guaranteed that it's going to be the winner of this against Josh Taylor for the yeah. European. A few people sort of said, well, well, will that not be a step back for Josh after his win over Vasquez? I, I think, think I think it's a stepping stone. Maybe it's a step back in terms of ability. I'm but of it's the, a, you know, he's, opinion that these sort of title eliminators and fringe world title levels mm. like Vasquez is an experienced campaigner but he's coming to the end of his career not too different Just, from a European title really yeah, but he gets undefeated he's mm. again a good boxer at the weight he's fairly skilled um, and then from the punditry I thought right this is definitely Josh had mentioned that they'd fought yeah. in the amateurs he did, you know, yeah, he did, yeah. this Good is going point. to be potential rivalry they're, they're trying to sell it and then when Yigit was asked about it he announced his intention to drop down the weight said he's making weight very easily 
Um, he's not avoiding Taylor. It's a fight that could happen down the line, but he wants to go down in weight to lightweight and look to get a world title there. So was a bit of a spanner in the works and sort it was of maybe a, defeats the point of the whole promotion. A, it was an absolute curveball, and I honestly wondered whether the McWiggins and the team at Cyclone knew were, anything had about any it. inkling of that mm. whatsoever, or has Yigit just used that to leverage a, a decent payday coming over here to fight yeah. Hughes in a fight he'd expected to win? Maybe, yeah. Good and point. then if he can drop down weight I mean well, fair play to him but no, you just think true. why has he campaigned all his career up to lightweight uh, up to European title level at light, at super lightweight to then think right well I'm on the cusp of getting a big fight and then see you, later. Yeah, see you later it's a shame because it would really be a good fight it would be a good fight because it's you know a European title is a good stepping stone for Josh you know it is sort of just that gap between the world level that he's aiming for because he's still young and it's we're just talking about like the something from the win, fights isn't it? having less appeal and then mm. obviously fighting an undefeated Yigit yeah who's now been exposed to the UK audience against a vacant European title shot against someone we don't know yeah it just not stalls the momentum of Taylor but. Just then you think, well, no, is it really worth getting the European oh, title or true, does he right? get himself in the mix for what would be the vacant world titles now that Terence Crawford's vacated and left all four belts? Uh, yeah, well, that's it. Uh, it's an interesting one now for Josh Taylor. Um, I always look forward to watching I his think journey watching regardless. It, but... I'd have, I'd have favoured Taylor anyway, oh, to be honest. Yeah, but yeah, I'd have strongly yeah. favoured him after watching last night. Maybe that's... I'm saying you mm-hmm. get boxed fairly well there, but Hughes, who's not Josh Taylor... Yeah was catching him to the body in particular, which we know something Taylor likes to do oh, and is very, yeah. very effective with. 100%, yeah. So I think maybe that possibly had something to do with Yigit's decision mm. to um, go on well, a diet. Well, uh, that's a good point, yes. No, definitely. definitely. But uh, as you say, it is a bit of a curveball there from him. Uh, but but yeah, credit to, credit to him for winning the fight and a massive credit to uh, Hughes as well. Uh, as you say, considering what he's been through and what he's you know facing, it's a great effort, isn't it? But let's see what happens with Josh and let's watch it with interest as we always do with him because he's an incredible talent and probably one of my favourite current UK boxers to be honest, if not the favourite. Yeah, he's up there with me definitely as well. Uh, another one of my favourite boxers, not from the UK this one, and this is probably of all time, he's one of my mm. ones I admire the most, that's Miguel Cotto. Sad. Um, hanging up the gloves after what was supposed to be um, a fairly routine win over Saddam Ali. Saddam Ali, yeah. It didn't turn out that way for Miguel. Did you see it or not? I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. I've set it on record, so I will be watching it after the podcast, which is um, pointless in terms of discussing (laughs) it. But I I know what's happened, and uh, for those of you that don't, and you don't want to know, (laughs) turn away now. First stop now. (laughs) But um, Cotton actually lost to Saddam Ali, which was a massive shock Mm. from, I think, all points, to be honest. There was... Basically, a bit of ridicule, the fact that he picked Ali to, to be his last oh, opponent. Was, yeah, he's yeah. not a particularly big name. He'd lost to Jesse Vargas, who's notoriously light-hitting. Mm. And um, he actually was stopped by him in, I think, the ninth round of their bout. Yeah. Come back with sort of one win since then and stepped up in weight as well. And you just thought, well, this is just tailor-made. They've picked someone that Cotto was going to walk through. But I think the fact he hasn't... Just sort of justifies yeah. his decision that this is the end. He's reiterated that yeah, he is true, still yeah. retiring. He's not after a rematch or good, anything. Good, good. It is, yeah. He's, it's he's a shame. It's, it's it's sa- it is sad that it's ended that way because he's a modern day warrior. Cotto, you know, look at people in his forties, don't know, but he's fought them all. Um, and it is a shame to end like that. You thought it would be a routine win, you know, as you said. It happens uh, all too often, though. Bowing out with the garden, go, and, you know, it was the script was written for him. One too many. It's a, it's a real shame, but I guess that win now. Throws that door wide open for Liam Smith, who's the mandatory for that. And well, obviously, yeah, he sure it's a fight he'd fancy. He us, won the um, that sort of mandatory position yeah. against Liam, Liam Williams, Williams in yeah. Newcastle. In the press conference afterwards, Frank Warren was asked about that and the sort there was of a feeling in the and press conference that we know Cotto will win it and there'll be a vacant belt. Well, yeah, I was just going to say that his answer was Cotto's going to vacate, mm. so Liam Smith's going to be fighting for a vacant belt. But there's another curveball last night that mm. now Ali's in. Yeah. Well, poor position. Being the champion, he's fight? going to have to defend that mandatory against Liam Smith. And bet that's a fight Liam Smith will quite fancy, to be honest. Whether he has to travel again like he did for Canelo, then fair enough. But I think he'll get a bit more recognition as well than yeah. if it had been for a vacant title because yeah, he's done so, that yeah, before. And yeah, definitely. There's, there's doubt as on the sort of quality of opposition he faced to get that belt. Mm. So, yes, he can call himself a world champion, but how credible a world champion is, I think, very much open to debate. Whereas if he goes over and Beats the defending yep. belt holder, 
or if he brings him over, Frank stumps up the cash and they get him over here. Mm. Which they may be able to do now with the BT Sport back in, you know. It would be a so, bit more of a credible win than if you just sort of picked mm. up another one over another yep. WBO ranked contender. Uh, like the last one. Yeah, that's it. Uh, speaking of 154, um, expecting an announcement this week from Eddie Hearn uh, detailing Cal Brooks' plans. There's been a few tweets about that, that he'd probably be fighting at Sheffield in March. Well, he actually tweeted Ali about that, didn't he? Sam mm. Emily included in one of his tweets, right. saying this. obviously he's looking to get in amongst there, but I'm assuming that Smith has precedence mm. over that. I think Kell will fight a winnable fight in March, just to you know get him back out under the... You know, under test the his light. eye sockets. In, test his eye sockets in Sheffield. <laughs> I, uh, and then, you know, maybe he's have world plans again after that, but I think at the minute it's probably just easing him back out there and... You know, in front of his home crowd. Um, the cynic in me says that both Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren with Smith and Brooke will look to target Ali. Yeah. Oh, 100%. He's ah, yeah, by yeah. far the easiest yeah. of the champions. Massively, you look at yeah. the, the other belt holders in that division, the likes of Eris Landy Lara, yeah. uh, it's Jamel Charlo, who yeah, recently knocked out ah, yeah, uh, yeah. Lubin, yeah. and Jarrett Hurd, isn't it, who beats mm. Austin Trout. They are three really really mm. elite top level boxers and yep. to see them fight off against each other talking about super series and things that'll be throw mm, Calbrook in the mix throw yeah, yeah. Smith in the mix at the world level yeah. that'll be really interesting and I Roddy, just and think Roddy's still at that division is he kicking he's floating between middleweight away. and uh, junior and super yeah. welterweight so yeah mm. he could probably get in there if he wanted so, to I just think that because a few of them are represented by Al Heyman mm. oh, that's it, true yeah and around very good, good money to make routine defences I think it's going to take a lot to get in the ring with them and from a Brook point of view and a Smith point of view really the risk versus reward of getting mm-hmm. one of those it's going to be very easy for them to avoid them I think he's at a fascinating point now Kel Brook I think he's probably at a similar point to we'll say like Jamie McDonald, Tony Bellew and that maybe he's only got three or four fights left if that you know he's, he's been through a lot he's had some wars you know Spence, Golovkin you know there's and I think he just he obviously he'll have this sort of I'll say homecoming, but not homecoming. But you know, he had this fight in March. I don't expect it to be a particularly uh, groundbreaking opponent in Sheffield. But then I think after that, then it's it's sort of all or nothing now for Kel Brook. It's it's either right, we go for a world title at one five four. You know, that's the only option now, really, isn't it? It's, I think physically it yeah. is because you get, a lot has been made for years about his ability to make one four seven and how comfortably or uncomfortably he's done that. So I think. I think he's just had to. The Golovkin the fight and the was a great fight yeah. in terms of the finances and he was on to basically mm. hiding for nothing in the sense yeah. that if he won, somehow pulled off that shock, shock yeah. the world, he's going to be absolutely like up there pound for pound rankings of boxing. So he's lost, he's been injured. I think, right, okay, what's next? He wanted to defend his belt. There's great bouts out there at welterweight for him. Yeah. He's made the weight again for the Spence one, lost that. Yeah, Suddenly that was, it's like, he well, was done there. Well, the how way, hard yeah. is it, or how worth it is it to make that hard weight cut? Yeah. Now he's going up to one fifty four, and for me, it's a case of like from one very very deep division in terms of the talent at to the top another, level to another, hundred yeah, percent. And arguably, they're going to hit harder. They're bigger men. Mm. I think he had to to I, think he was, I think he was done it that way. There was no. It was just common knowledge, wasn't it? That it was bloody hard for him to make that weight. And I remember a couple of years ago hearing an interview where he heard saying, you know. He, wanted to move him up to one five four but as you said the opportunities came along that he couldn't turn down, you know, but now is the time to do it and I think it'll be fascinating to see how he how he goes. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad he's coming back. Um, it's a fighter that I've I've enjoyed over the years like everyone else I guess and I don't know, I guess here we go again, Brook Corn and see how long this takes and you know is it is the to get out of the jungle first. Well that's it. I know I think it's a fight me personally I still think there's there's room for that fight at some point in the future. I think until both men are Winning again and fighting. No, I was going to say the opposite. Right. Until both men are absolutely mm. done and retired, that fight will always be on the table. I think it's it will, always eh? something that will be talked about. It's losing more and more appeal the longer it drags on. It is, but then. But then. Amir Khan's stocks will never be higher, but that's weird because it's not from boxing. It's there from, is not a chance mm. that Eddie Hearn will not be able to sell mm. that. I know. As a massive pay per view fight, it's it's it oh, will happen. It will. Especially on obviously this jungle thing could be the mating of Amir Khan again. He's he's gone from a, a figure of ridicule. I know I'm saying it's daft, but honestly, his stock with the British public now has probably never been higher. Apart, I don't watch it regularly, but uh, <laughs> apparently he's doing really well. And you know he'd come out here and people would be talking about him again. And it was a bit of a joke that he went in, but you know it could help his career. Who knows? But let's see. Well, David Hayes did similar, didn't he? Mm, and of course, it's, uh, it's not unknown. And no, yeah, it's not. I mean, uh, watch the space for that one. I think it's still. 
on the card somewhere down the line. Well, that's it. Um, so, again, it's something to look at, but we'll keep an eye on this Calibut announcement, which is apparently coming maybe early this week. So, see how that goes. Looking forward to it. Is there anything else you want to cover? Um, no, there's nothing. There's one thing I've got. Oh, he's still he's gone. Oh, no, that's just one. Yeah, if, you've yeah. got, if you're done. No, I'm, I've gone. What um, have you got? Andrew Fairley on Twitter oh, Andrew Fairley. has said it'd be great to give a shout out to Chris Hobbs on his retirement. A great campaigner who can look back on his career with pride. Um, for those of you who don't know, he fought on Friday night, wasn't it? He, against Liam Conroy. He did, yeah. He lost to Liam Conroy, stopped in the ninth. Um, Dislocated shoulder, I believe. Uh, thank you to Andrew, by the way, Andrew Fairley. That was sort of sending us minute by minute, round by round updates on Twitter. It was, wasn't it? I felt like you know he sent it to us in Martin Martin New Age Boxing, and I felt like I was there. Uh, but honestly, it was a uh, thank you for that, and fair play to you for going traveling and supporting your man. Uh, good on you. Because that's the. I mean, it's always nice to talk about. We talk about Miguel Cotto retiring there, and obviously he's going to get the accolades and mm. probably inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame. Like worldwide attention will be on that but then you've got someone like Chris who's campaigned domestically and probably put as much work into his fight camps as someone like Cotto mm. like maybe not in terms of the hours and the oh yeah definitely the quality but in terms of the effort undoubtedly and put a British warrior and I know Anthony Yard beat him but uh, he only put up a really brave brave fight in that uh, but also on the flip side of that, credit Aline Conroy, a, f- a fighter that we know quite well from when we cover the MTK Manchester shows down there with Johnny Roy and Preston and stuff. Um, credit to him, he's, he's put together a really nice little winning run. Liam Conroy now, um, after a bit of a mixed start of his career, it's fair to say he's had a couple of losses sort of littered through his record, but he's a, he's a nice guy, Liam. <laughs> there we go. He's a lovely fella, <laughs> Liam Conroy. Yeah. It's about to happen eventually, yeah. someone had to be a nice bloke. And he's got the back of MTK Manchester, as I say, Johnny Roy and... Fair play to him for it. He's you know he's he's putting it together a nice little run. But um, yeah, credit to Chris Hobbs, um, absolute warrior. Uh, X forces, I believe. Um, hard hard man. Um, just but it's a shame that dislocated shoulder ended his effort. And but you know, all the best to Chris. With all the best. He all the best to yeah. do from now on in. And thank you to Andrew for the updates and the question. Thank you. Yeah, Andrew Fairley, not me. Andrew Fairley, not you. But well, thank you to you too. <laughs> oh, too kind. But yeah, no, thank you again. But anything else you want to add? Anything? No, I think that's it for this week, to be honest. Um, I think it is. We look forward to whatever matchroom announcements are coming this week. Apparently, it's, there's a hair belly announcement, a Kelly Brook announcement. Then on Saturday, we've got James DeGale, Lee yeah, Selby, so Anthony Yard, Daniel Dubois from we'll the Cotter Box. we looking to do a review on that next week. Yep. Yeah. Um, obviously, discussing anything else that comes out during the week, like you've just sort of yeah. touched on and Course, covered and then, there. Then we, oh, we will also have the um, the matchroom show on the 13th, which we'll look at next weekend as well, because that'll, we will preview that as well next weekend. And is, an MTK Scotland show on the 16th. Aye, so so <laughs> even though the North East seems to have uh, and, shut uh, down for the end of the year. And Billy Joe Saunders as well. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we've still got enough coming up. And Gary Corsovan, Corgovan, Corcoran, yeah. against Jeff Horn as well on the 13th. So plenty coming up in British boxing uh, between now and the end of the year. So... Um, we we'll, we we'll look forward to speaking about that in the next couple of weeks. Probably two more podcasts left this year, I think, for us too. So yeah, probably. I'd say we've got enough to talk about in the next few weeks. Obviously, then boxing tends to die down. January. Uh, yeah, around sort of we might Christmas, look, New Year. We time. might look to do a few interviews with people, and you know, maybe merge that as part of the sort of special episodes. Uh, there's a few people we've got in mind, so hopefully we'll look at that as well. But again, thank you for listening, though, and thank you for sending any questions. And yeah. cheers, thank you. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes. <laughs> Every week I'm going to get this in. Yes, please subscribe on iTunes. We've got YouTube, we've got SoundCloud, but um, we might be totally way off on this. We think iTunes will probably be people's mm-hmm. most preferred way of, um, of listening. So we if haven't. that is the case, make sure you subscribe and get that on iTunes. Obviously, if not, if you prefer SoundCloud, that's fine by us. As long as you listen. <laughs> Brilliant, Nelvis. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah, thank you.